Hi everyone, welcome to How to Electronics. Today, we will introduce you to a very powerful and highly advanced accelerometer called ADXL375, which can measure acceleration up to plus minus 200 G. You might be familiar with accelerometer modules like ADXL335 or ADXL345, as well as MPU6050. Well, these modules are good for simpler projects, but fails miserably when working on projects that require high precision, high resolution, and advanced application. This is the ADXL375 module, which is a digital MEMS accelerometer designed by analog devices. The sensor is small and thin with ultra-low power consumption as low as 35 microamperes in measurement mode. And the best thing about this sensor is that it can measure the acceleration up to plus minus 200 G. Imagine reading such a high gravitational pull of the Earth or measuring the acceleration of a very fat moving object. Here, ADXL375 can be used. In this tutorial, we will first go through the ADXL375 features, capabilities, pin out and other details. And then, I will show you how you can use this sensor with Arduino or ESP32 using the C++ code. We can also write a MicroPython code and use the ADXL375 with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Later, I will show you some example projects done using the ADXL375 accelerometer. This includes a vibration analyzer and FFT plotter. Here, we monitor machine or structural vibrations and exact dominant frequencies. Similarly, we can also build a wireless tilt meter or an inclinometer. It means we can compute pitch and roll from X, Y, Z vectors and report them over Wi-Fi or BLE. As a third project, we can also make a free fall detector. This means we can detect if an object or person goes into free fall or lands hard. For the fourth project, I designed a parameter or a step counter. This is a wearable steps counter or motion tracker device that counts steps and logs data to a smartphone over the BLE. To understand all these projects, watch the video till the end. For now, without getting any further delayed, let's get started. Welcome back again. Let's learn about the ADXL375 accelerometer first. The ADXL375 is a small, thin, 3-axis accelerometer that provides low power consumption and high resolution measurement up to plus minus 200 G. The digital output data is formatted as 16-bit, 2's complement data, and is accessible through a SPI or I2C digital interface. It operates between a supply voltage range of 2.0 to 3.6 volt. It is an ultra low power consumption module which runs as low as 35 microamperes in measurement mode and 100 nanoamperes in standby mode. It supports a bandwidth of up to 1 kHz. The bandwidth is selectable via serial command. An integrated memory management system with a 32-level FIFO buffer can be used to store data to minimize host processor activity and lower overall system power consumption. The sensor has the ability to determine shock even or could be used in an activity or inactivity monitoring system. One shocking thing I noticed about this module is it has a 10,000 G shock survival, which is amazing. According to the data sheet, it could be used for concussion or head trauma detection and also for high force event detection. The rest of the information about the sensor can be collected through the data sheet. Alright, let's move to the sensor interfacing and users part.
I have three microcontrollers with me today. They are Arduino Nano with AT Mega 328, then an ESP32 module, and finally a Raspberry Pi Pico with RP2050 microcontroller. I will interface the ADXL375 with all these MCUs. First, let's do the basic testing with Arduino Nano. I used an I2C interface to connect the ADXL375 with Arduino Nano. I simplified the connection on the breadboard using the jumper cable and keeping the ADXL375 direction as shown in the breakout board. To develop a firmware, I found a very well-written library from Adafruit. You can simply download this GitHub repository and add it to the Arduino IDE library folder through the library manager. I just modified an example code to run the sensor via I2C mode and simply uploaded this code. After code upload, I can see the acceleration data on the serial monitor for all the X, Y, and Z axis. The X and Y data should be almost at zero as the sensor is placed on a flat surface. The Z axis data should be almost 9.8 m per second square due to the gravitational pull of the Earth but it's showing some offset readings. That's why I modified the code for auto calibration. I took readings of 100 samples and then averaged them out. And finally added some offsets to the reading to auto calibrate. Once this code is uploaded, the reading gets corrected. To observe the change in reading, shake the sensor or move the sensor or jerk it. You will see a massive change in the reading. To see the readings on the OLED display, I again modified the code and uploaded it. Here, you can see that the OLED display is displaying the readings of the X, Y, and Z axis acceleration. Similarly, I also did the testing of the same code with ESP32. I connected the I2C pin of ADXL375 to the I2C pin of ESP32. Then, uploaded the sample sketch. The sample sketch worked fine and displayed the acceleration reading. Finally, I have a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. I connected the I2C pins of ADXL375 to the I2C pins of the Pico board. Then, I developed a sample MicroPython sketch to get the readings. On running the code, the acceleration values are displayed. Again, the readings don't look correct, and we need to add the offset value. So, I modified the MicroPython sketch to get the correct calibrated readings. Now, again, after running the code, you can see the correct value of acceleration in the X, Y, and Z axis. Overall, the ADXL375 worked well with Arduino, ESP32, and Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, it's time to have some real application projects using the ADXL375 accelerometer. The first project I built is a vibration analyzer using the Fast Fourier Transform Plotter. I used ESP32 and ADXL375 together for this. Here, I have developed a code that extracts the dominant frequencies. I am running the sample at a high rate, around 1 kHz into a circular buffer. Then, I ran a simple FFT using Arduino FFT libraries. Here, you can see the spectrum in real time and collect the vibration data. Using this information, you can do further analysis. The second project I built using ADXL375 and ESP32 is a wireless tilt meter, which is also known as inclinometer. Here, using some mathematical equations, the readings are converted into pitch and roll data. You cannot get the yaw reading without the magnetometer. That's why only pitch and roll are calculated. The pitch and roll data is displayed on the OLED screen as well. This project can be great for leveling tripods, satellite dishes, or CNC zeroing. The third project that I built using the ADXL375 is Free Fall Detector. 
I have modified this sketch to detect if an object or a person goes into free fall or lands hard. For that, I use a low threshold interrupt to catch near 0z. Then a high threshold for landing. It triggers a wireless alarm at home or may give push notifications via Wi-Fi. The fourth project is the DIY pedometer or a step counter. This is basically a wearable device. This code filters and thresholds vertical acceleration for hill strike patterns. The count steps and track cadence. The data is sent over the NRF Connect app over the ESP32 BLE. That's all from the project part today. All the interfacing guides and project tutorials can be found on the How to Electronics website link. You can go through the description in details to get this schematic, circuit, code, and written tutorial guide. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.